welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. What happens when we shrink an object down until it's smaller than a ball bearing, tinier than a louse, smaller than a single bacteria, even a virus, small enough that it takes a modern supercharged transmission electron microscope just to see the thing? Shrinking objects to the nanoscale has been known to change just about every quality, every property we can observe. For example, after shrinking a red rubber ball to less than 500 nanometers in size, the ball would cease to have a distinct red color. The ball would actually have no real defined color at all. The color the rubber ball would reflect back would be related to how small we shrank it and the color of the light that hit it. Our red ball certainly wouldn't bounce anymore if we threw it. It wouldn't act like rubber or flubber. It would be very, very sticky and would adhere to any surface it came in contact with. The shape of the ball wouldn't be round anymore. It would be dynamic and complex, shifting around all the time. It would depend on the way we were looking at it. Reality seems to have boundaries, beyond which things stop making sense. Beyond the speed of light, our sense of time and space is almost useless because everything starts to behave in this weird, wonky, completely unrecognizable way. It's the same thing when you get too small. The world at the nanoscale is more of a place of myth and legend than the reality we're used to. We're only beginning to learn about the bizarre rules in this place. Things we create in this size landscape have been assigned the term quantum dots. We can make quantum dots out of anything, really. Buckminster Fullerenes are examples of quantum dots of carbon. In last week's episode, How Gold is Red and Blue, I described how gold metal quantum dots were responsible for the bright colors in ancient stained glass windows. When it comes to quantum dots, the materials the objects are composed of are of less importance. Metals can be bright and dazzling in color, and even transparent when they're confined to tiny nanoscale bits. A quantum dot is an isolated island of material in a sea of nothing. They can be made from any chemical or material. It's not the chemistry that's driving the properties of quantum dots. That's only part of it. For materials like this, it's mostly their near infinitesimal size and shape. QDs, for this reason, behave not so much like the material they're built from, but more like the individuals they are, and it depends on the environment in which they're surrounded. Quantum dots can be unpredictable and even dangerous. Materials normally considered safe and non-toxic can interact with our bodies in new ways when they're this small, and can sometimes take on a dark side. Even carbon itself can be dangerous to biological structures in quantum dot form. Since it's the dose that makes the poison, some quantum dots are being created with just the right properties to make them toxic to cancers, but not to our bodies. These zero-dimensional materials have already made it into our homes. Some of the new QLED TV sets out there rely on quantum dots to emit or blink out the different colors of visible light instead of conventional light-emitting diodes. It turns out these tiny objects can be more brilliant than lasers and chemical dyes. It's possible to create different shapes and composites of materials in a quantum dot. Core shell nanoparticles are tiny balls made from one thing with surfaces composed of another. These quantum objects can have very interesting and useful properties, sometimes completely distinct from the materials used to construct the core and shell. One of the other things I find exciting about all this is the potential to put different types of quantum dots together in different ways. Coupling different types of quantum dots could lead to entirely new interactions and potentially new unexpected material properties. What if we could assemble a crystal and put different quantum dots together in a special order, in the same way stringing together explosive sodium with toxic chlorine in a crystal leads to a lump of table salt. This structure could act like a completely new thing, composed of synthesized quantum dot quasi-atoms, atoms that had never existed on planet Earth.
Engineers are looking into using quantum dot dust to store information and track processes in the body. QDs could even be used as hidden labels to track just about anything. Even though this technology goes back to ancient times, the term quantum dot wasn't coined until 1986, the same year Chernobyl exploded, Halley's Comet passed by Earth, and the Oprah Winfrey Show debuted. These ideas are pretty new. In a way, it's like the discovery of a new periodic table with new tiny elements to choose from. What happens when we add a dot of this with a dot of that? What happens when these dots start playing together? Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.